So red velvet woke me up early this morning for a feed, half past five, and there is an amazing sunlight. Oh, Sandy's playing with a pine cone. Beautiful sun. Sunrise. Don't even know if I can speak properly. It's still early. Sunrise this morning. Beautiful. She actually fed them about 20 minutes ago and they were all on her. So she's giving these few like a bonus drink here. Didn't last long. You got bored with feeding them again. Now when they all start coming. Yeah, now they're all starting to come and now she's decided up oh, bonus feeding time is done. Keeping a watchful, watchful eye this morning because this is the little miracle pig. Practicing her standing, still weak, but Candy's watching. So in the kitchen, um, this was actually behind something, so I never noticed it, so it never got pointed. And it's a little hidey hole. The kittens keep going in there and jumping in and out of it. But I think they will only be able to fit in there for a short while. I'm going to try you with a bottle. Want to see if you can suck on this? Hmm? Come on. That's it. Come on. Oh, you're making quite a mess. You're making a big mess all over my clothes. I'm meant to be looking like a milk person. have a shower after this one. Hmm? Making such a mess and you're slipping down my legs. Oh, that was my hand. Okay, okay. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. I'm 
much is actually going in. Which is actually going in. You're chewing down on your own teeth there. There we go. It's standing up on all fours. Still trying to take steps, struggling a bit with that, but just wants to stand up. Yes. What a fighter. So, red velvet, the mid miracle pig is having some time outside look at that did you see how she stood up it's a little bit shaky taking steps now okay you can't walk over that big stick hold on let me move this big stick you can't expect you to walk over a big stick but look standing Having some outside time. Pandy ever present. It's overcast day. No rain is likely, but it's a bit cooler. So she's not, you don't want to take her out in direct sun, but this kind of weather is fine. Oh, she seems to be over an ant nest over here. Let me move, Let me move you away from the ants. We don't want to be by the ants. Look Tundi licking her and looking after. You're such a good dog, Tundi. Hey? You're such a good dog. Yes. Just very gentle. Very gentle, Tundi. Very gentle. Oh, careful. Don't knock her over. Are you cleaning her? Are you cleaning all that milk that she missed? Such a good girl, Tundi. But now she's lying on her side. She can't get up. You're cleaning her a bit too much there. Let's help her upright. Hop, nope. Oh, she's determined. There she goes. Oh, careful, Tundi. I know you're cleaning her. Look at her, you're cleaning her all over. I think Tundi might think she's with puppy or something. Hey, what do you think, Tundi? You think this is a puppy? I 
I love how she's cleaning her and cleaning all that Cyrillic off her that she had missed. Oops, careful. Don't push it too much. Gentle. Now that the back legs are working, she's just wanting to stand all the time. So she's now standing, sleeping. But her breathing is much better. So fingers crossed, she continues to recover. Yesterday was very bad. This is how I am sitting and working online at the moment. So let me tell you the story of Red Velvet, the miracle pig. So on Sunday morning, I noticed that um, she was lying down, didn't seem to be able to move her back legs. And um, she also seemed a little bit lethargic. But I did lift her up and put her on the mother when the mother was feeding and she drank no problem um she was able to suckle on the mother um so i left it a little i thought oh maybe her legs are a little bit stiff maybe she got crushed and uh later on um that morning when her mother was busy feeding again, I tried to put her on the mother again. And she wanted to get there. She wanted to suckle, but she didn't have the strength in the back legs to fight the other 10 piglets to um, get on the teats. So I took her um, and started feeding her with a syringe because she didn't know how to take the bottle, didn't want to take the bottle, didn't want to open her mouth enough to take the bottle teat, but I could get the edge of the syringe in like the corner of her mouth. And so she came to associate um, the syringe with eating. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, that's my cat allergy. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I managed to give her water that way as well. And... Um, on Monday, um, she was still eating, no problem. And then Monday afternoon, I started hearing that um, her breathing started getting a bit rough. So at that stage, I was still thinking she'd been crushed. Maybe she's got a broken rib. Um, but then uh, Monday night, the breathing got worse. So... Um, and I'd contacted the vet and the vet could only see me at four o'clock on the, th the Tuesday afternoon. So um, 
she still ate no problem all of Tuesday. When the vet saw her on um, Tuesday afternoon, her breathing was, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, sorry, cat allergy gives me like a tickle in the throat. So um, her, her breathing was not good. The vet took her temperature. It was almost 41. Um, so she had a very high fever. And the vet said she's got really bad um, pneumonia. And she doesn't think she's going to make that night. It's like really, really bad. And so um, I got her. She had her, the injections. And uh, she had an anti-inflammatory, and I think that helped because when she got home, she was ravenous, and she actually ate out of a bowl um, by herself for the first time. That's how ravenous she was. And then I tried to feed her again before I went to sleep about half past nine, ten that night. She didn't want to eat at all, which was unusual for her. And she was very lethargic and floppy. And I thought, mm, this isn't looking good. And her breathing sort of got worse. I woke up at uh, 2 o'clock Wednesday morning. Um, hearing her breathing was like, <gasps> <gasps> you could hear she couldn't get a breath at all. It was like really um, very loud. So I... Um, Got out of bed, uh, took her out of her crate, and um, I sat until half past four, just holding her, um, massaging her chest, and because I was thinking she's definitely dying, like the vet said she would, and um, and I just didn't want her to die alone. So um, by half past four, her breathing had sort of calmed down a bit it was still <gasps> but not like high pitched <clears throat> like that if I'm trying to copy the piglet and so um, yeah and then the whole of Wednesday her breathing was very ragged she refused to eat um, I kept, the only thing I could do was use the syringe to just get um, water into the corner of her mouth so that to keep her hydrated um, and I really thought this is it she's not even going to make the afternoon but she made the afternoon and then I thought she's not going to make the night and I did the pig feeding and I was fully expecting that evening to come back and red velvet will have passed but she was still fighting on and um, breathing was still bad. I gave her her um, shots. And uh, um, and then at 1.30 in the morning, I was woken up by red velvet. Not from her breathing this time. But the little madam was standing up and going <laughs> like desperate for food. So I gave her some food, which she absolutely demolished. And her breathing sounded much better, not as ragged. And I was thinking, what on earth has happened? This piglet was dying. There was the whole of Wednesday, it was dying. She was not going to be making it. Anyway, so I managed to see the vet um, Thursday morning. Um, just to get more meds for her because um, I'd given all the meds that the vet had given me because she didn't think she was going to make it. And um, I didn't take her with me to the vet. I just took a video of her to show the vet, um, of her standing up. But she, her balance seems to have gone. And I was thinking maybe oxygen starvation to the brain has made her a little bit, I don't know special so um, I went saw the vet again yesterday 
and um, the vet couldn't believe that her lungs are almost completely clear but she's thinking maybe she's got like a staph um, infection now in the ears or something that has resulted from this that, which is causing this um, being wobbly on the legs she is much stronger today on the legs I have to say but she's still she she reminds me of like a little gymnast and an acrobat because she like goes and then she falls on her side and rolls onto the back and flips herself up onto her feet again it's it's quite she's like a little acrobat but um it's become quite difficult to give her uh, her shots because she doesn't keep still. She is fighting everything. She's the fussiest little pig I've ever seen, ever. Um, when it is feeding time, she is so loud and so vocal. She's like, whereas Cupcake has got this high-pitched shot, this one is like, she sounds like a, I don't know, rabbit <laughs> pig, a wild pig. She's very loud. And then she attacks her food with absolute gusto. So she's eating so much. In fact, when the vet weighed her on Tuesday afternoon, she weighed 1.4 kilos. And on Friday, when the vet weighed her, she weighed 1.7 kilos. So she's put on 300 grams from Tuesday to Friday and I think it's the amount of food that she's eating. So to all those people who've been um, sending her prayers and positive thoughts to the and energy to the universe etc. Thank you so much. On behalf of Red Velvet she thanks you because she's doing much better and she was yeah the vet said she was dying. I mean, she was dying. The vet can't believe this recovery. The vet's never seen a recovery like this. So, um, she's, she's something special, Red Velvet. <laughs> she's a bit crazy. When you pick her up, man, she lets you know she's angry, hungry, hangry. And for those celebrating Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much for watching. And in the meantime, stay sane, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Give the video a like, comment below. All the good stuff. Have a great week ahead. Bye for now.